on the cutting edge of anomaly research, you are about to experience the evidence with your host, 3D pioneer and image analyst with Mars X 3D, D.W. Gannett. Are you a person who's uncomfortable with change? Are you a person who resists learning new skills because of the effort that's involved? Hi, this is your buddy Dave over at Mars X3D. And yes, there is learning a new skill involved. You see, when you learn X3D viewing, and there are links down below in the description, tutorials that you can learn the process in a couple of minutes or less. When you learn X3D, it turns your entire computer into effective giant Viewmaster, a magic window, so to speak, that opens up onto the surface of Mars. And as far as change goes, if you're willing to learn X3D, then the evidence that we share on this channel will almost certainly change the way you view your place and our place as humanity within the greater universe. Now, by the way, if you think I can't do X3D, let me tell you about Jimmy Bob, one of our cross-eyed explorers. He's six and a half years old, going on seven, and he views an X3D like a pro and loves it. The tutorials are simple. Just have a look at them. Anyway, I was looking at an anomaly that my buddy Laszlo Shabalik shared with me this week, and it happened to be in Curiosity Sol 703. And while I was looking at that anomaly, I remembered the fact that 703, from the early days of Curiosity, is arguably the most anomaly dense bit of imagery that we've yet seen. And of course, Neville Thompson had made a beautiful PDS G-Pan of it that's worth looking at. Anyway, 703 includes some of the best classics in Martian anomalies, and I thought, okay, let's just do this episode on 703 and see what comes up. So anyway, thanks for stopping by. Learn that X3D. This channel won't make a lick of sense if you don't. And let's have a look at the historic and amazing anomalies found in Curiosity 703. Here we go with the famous Sol 703. I contend that this Sol and this beautiful PDS G Pan by Neville Thompson has the highest density of anomalies to be found in any of the images we've gotten yet. Just to prove my point, we'll take this context view and point out just five of the dozen or more strange items to be found in just this one small section. Some of these will be zoomed to the breakup point, but you already know that your mind automatically clears things up whenever you view something in 3D. So, let's start with something I call inscribed. That'd be the one inside the yellow target. Is this a rock? <laughs> I kind of doubt it. Whatever that inscribed square is on the left side sure doesn't look natural to me. Then you've got those three hemispheres in a row on the top right. The overall shape is roughly cubical and the white material it's made of doesn't match the surrounding geology. Well, actually there are a few pieces that have the same color. I count about four. But who's to say they're not pieces of the same thing? 
As we begin our dive down into the blurry details, this one caught my eye, not only because it has the distinctively smooth look of worked or polished stone, but it has those perfect right angle cutouts. Just let your eye wander around a bit in this one, and you'll see a half dozen more anomalies that need a closer look. But let's move on. This is the one inside the white circle in the context view. And you can begin to see how strange this is as we move in tight. What caught my attention are the two big almond-shaped eyes that appear to have pupils, or at least knobs, in each one. I doubt this is actually intended to be a face, but I gotta admit this isn't your run-of-the-mill rock, right? And you've probably already noticed the half dozen or so other anomalies already. I know this is blurry, but remember, I'm making an example of this section to demonstrate how anomaly-rich this entire saw is. Notice how the box in the center has the inside cut out, plus all the other right-angled pieces right around it. Let's move on to a larger example that's a bit more clear. Look at that rigidly perfect square filled with sand. It's difficult not to imagine this as part of a building at one time. And look at the right side with all those little rectangular teeth arranged like a comb. I'll bet we're just looking at the tip of the iceberg on this one. This is one I ran across years ago, kind of hidden in the jumble of rocks at the top center. I hope you can see why I called this one carving in capstone. But just in case, here are some arrows to point them out. As far as I'm concerned, that's straight up carving on the piece to the left. And as you examine the overall shape, it gives the impression of being a broken capstone as well. The one on the right is pretty much intact, except for that right corner, although that might just be deep shadow making it look like the corner is missing. These two examples remind me of the Benben stones we find in ancient Egypt. Benben stones were carved capstones that finished off the top of a pyramid, like the one you see here from Amenemhat III. <laughs> Don't be too impressed with how I rattled off that pronunciation just now. I remembered that name because it sounds like what you'd say if you ate a jalapeno-flavored M&M. M&M hot. Back in the day, a remark like that would have gotten me strung up by the heels on the city wall. And, of course, that would mean no more M&Ms for me. I should mention that most of these classic anomalies were found by Thomas Mikey Schroeder Jensen, Martine Graney, Rami bar Ilan, and, of course, yours truly back in the day. Who knows who actually saw them first? Probably the, the night janitor at NASA headquarters. Anyway, I seem to remember TJ being the first one to point this out, just sticking out of the hillside pretty close to the rover. What do you make of this? That's a really strange way for a boulder to break, if you ask me, especially leaving behind a long, rectangular inclusion inside the mouth of this thing. But you know, when you look at it, 
Notice that it's that good old Martian blue stone and that it doesn't match anything around it. Your guess is as good as mine and that's all we can do on something like this. Just guess. Here's one my buddy Laszlo Shabalix pointed out and yes, there are a dozen other anomalies in this one section alone. But let's move in on the green target. Could that be any more perfectly shaped to look like the bow of a ship? Laszlo seems to specialize in boats. He's found a bunch of them. But I think this is one of the best. On a water planet like the one Mars used to be before the big boom, you'd expect to find nautical artifacts scattered about. And indeed, we do. Maybe in this year's Best Of compilation, we'll put a marine section in there just for our own amazement. As long as we're in a Laszlo frame of mind, here's another one he shared just this past week. I've heard this one called Thor's Hammer, but I doubt that it's any kind of hammer at all. Isn't it interesting how it rests at an angle like that? It's either really dense, I mean really heavy, or it's attached to something else under the sand. And while we're dwelling for a moment on Norse gods, here's another classic find called the Viking. You'll see why in just a second. You wouldn't believe how many dilettante anomaly hunters absolutely insisted this was either a red-bearded Viking or at the very least a gnome minus his pointy hat. There were all kinds of online arguments about it at the time, but you know, all you have to do is look at it to know that it may be strange, it may be out of place, but it ain't no Viking. Frankly, it looks more like an overhead view of a cicada than a Viking to me, but then I'm from Iowa. Here's another classic find from 703 that created a, a storm of online discussion. This is one that many insisted was a sphinx. Let's move in for a closer look. It's only maybe two feet across, so is this a mini sphinx? It's tempting to imagine a head on top with its face turned up to the sky. The body is fairly regular in shape and then there's that hole in the center front. While not strictly non-fractal, it does have a general appearance of intelligent agency. But if we take a step back from our biases and look objectively, there simply isn't enough detail to justify that extension on top as being a head or a face. At the same time, I find it difficult to imagine just how something like this could erode naturally. Perhaps at one time it was indeed a sculpted object that long since succumbed to the ravages of time. Wind and sand wearing away just enough detail to leave us with only the general shape. Regardless of what it might actually represent, this is another one of those classic finds that captivated imaginations all over the world. Let's wrap up our 703 classics with one of the most iconic finds ever made. 
if I remember correctly, I believe it was Rami Bar Ilan who first pointed this out. There have been all manner of extractions and processed variations of this particular anomaly, most of which are mostly imaginary or deceptive. You can see it there inside the yellow target all by itself drowning in a sea of sand. As you can see, I've lightened the contrast quite a bit and only worked with the pixels that are actually present in the image. So, what you see here is my best attempt to truthfully render what we're seeing. Most people are tempted to call this a tank with a gun of some kind aimed at a final forgotten target. Notice that the bottom of the gun barrel is bent, which makes firing it not only difficult, but lethal. In fact, how do we know that this isn't part of something much larger buried beneath the sand? Perhaps the very top of a monument of some kind. One of our viewers thought it looked like a modified diving helmet of some kind with a snorkel attached. Another one thought it looked more like a discarded gas can with a nozzle bent just the way gas can nozzles are angled. By the way, if you ever get a chance to join one of our live hangs, you'll get a sneak peek preview of images slated for this week's episode. I love getting the input from our viewers and I'm often amazed at their interpretation of the images. Well, that's it for 703, but trust me, there are plenty of anomalies left if you care to present them. And you know, for those of you who would like to help keep this channel ad-free, even a dollar a month, would go a long ways towards that goal. My sincere gratitude goes out to our patrons and our contributors. Thank you for your generous support. Meanwhile, if you saw something you liked, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. It helps me to know whether to continue this work. Be sure to subscribe and our next live hang is Tuesday, May 18th at 6.30 p.m. I look forward to seeing all you exceptional weirdos at that time. This is your buddy Dave at Mars X3D. Be well.